Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to your video on matched pairs t-tests. The picture of this gentleman is Mozart, and the reason he has on headphones you will see in our example. Matched pairs t procedures. To compare the responses of two treatments in a matched pairs design, apply a one sample t procedure to the observed differences. Now, you'll notice that this is very similar to the match pairs T interval that we did where we were in the computer lab and you all had the little test where you click the dots with your uh, right hand and you click the dots with your left hand and we took the differences to see if there was a significant difference. It's the same idea with this um, except we're going to run a significance test with it. So we hear that listening to Mozart improves students' performance on tests. To test this idea, we gave 11 students a paper and pencil maze to complete. The first list is the subject number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. The second is the data collected while completing the maze in dead silence. Okay, so that's the second row, or column rather. And then, so this is when they were working in silence, and then this is when they were working while listening to Mozart. This is a common thing. A lot of you guys, you know, you work better when you're listening to music. Um, some of you prefer silence. So we're kind of running a significance test here to see if music uh, help what might help improve your scores, listening to some sort of music. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is, these are paired. This is a paired procedure because each subject has a silent number and a listening to Mozart number. All right, we're listening to music. So their score while they're listening to music, their score while they're in silence. Okay, so we want to compare this third column, which is the differences. So we're going to get, we're going to kind of turn it into one sample by taking the differences. So I'm going to kind of write down the differences. You should follow along. All right, copy this down. If you need to pause it to go back and write, that's fine. So all I'm going to do is subtract this column minus this column. Negative 7.37 negative 3.14, 4.1, negative 4.4, 19.47, negative 10.8, negative 0 0.87, 8.7, 2.94, .9 negative 17.24, and 14.3. Now I'm going to use that column, the green numbers, and run a one sample uh, t-test, which is what we talked about yesterday. Okay, now the first thing that you want to do before you get started with your hypotheses, every time I want you to do this, you're going to put a positive and a negative. And you're going to determine what positive numbers mean and what negative numbers mean in the context of the problem. It will make it a lot easier for you. So now in this case, a positive number, if the number is positive, for example, this person here, number five, that person has a positive number. What does that mean? Well, it took them 68 seconds to do the maze, all right? Uh, in silence, it took them 49 seconds to do the maze while listening to music. So a positive number in this case means that the student did better with Mozart. All right, a positive number means the student did better while listening to Mozart. A negative number, for example, subject one, it took them 30 seconds to do it in silence, and it took them 37 seconds to do it while listening to music. So a negative number means that they did worse with Mozart. Okay, and the reason I do this is because it will help me with my hypotheses. Now, we start off, shocker, we start off with hypotheses. Okay, now in this case, null hypothesis, no change. If there's no change between the two scores, the mean will be zero. Okay? So this is tricky because the number zero is not given to you. You just have to understand it. So the mean change is zero. Again, no change. Now, the ha mu, we put zero. Determining the direction of this is what's tricky. So what we're doing is we want to test the idea that Mozart improves student scores. So we're looking for positive numbers. Positive numbers mean that the students did better with Mozart, so that's how I determine that that should be positive. 
And of course, the mu is the mean maze completion time. Okay, now, that is the hardest part of the problem, is coming up with that. Everything else is very similar to what we've done before. So, we jump down here to the conditions. Alright, and our conditions are for a one sample T test. And again, that's because I don't know sigma. I don't know the standard deviation of the population. I just have this data. So, an SRS, okay, now it doesn't, they're volunteers, so they're not randomly selected, but the treatments randomly selected. So it's like when you guys flip the coin to determine whether you started with your dominant hand or your non-dominant hand when you were clicking the dots uh, in the computer lab. Okay, the next one, normal. Uh, N greater than or equal to 30. Bad news. 11 is not greater than or equal to 30. Well, that means I can't use the central limit theorem. However, I do have all the numbers, so I have them typed in my handy-dandy calculator in the list one. You should definitely have those numbers typed in the list one. If you need to go back and pause it to type them in, that's fine. Um, so I have the numbers in list one. I'm going to create a box plot of list one. Zoom 9, look at my box plot, that's roughly symmetric. Okay, so even though the central limit theorem wasn't met, my box plot's roughly symmetric. So I can write box plot roughly symmetric proceed with caution. Okay, we move on. The last one is independence. We know how to check independence. That one's pretty easy. Okay, population, I'll abbreviate. Greater than or equal to 10N. Remember, you should never abbreviate on your tests or quizzes. 10 times 11. And 110, we're going to go ahead and say that there's more than 110 people that in the population. Okay, so we move on to some calculations. All right. Now, in order to do the calculations... We need numbers, which we have to get from our calculator because then we're not given to me. So that's why I have to have those numbers into list one. I have to run my one variable stats on list one, and there I can get my means. So I have a mean x bar of 0.51, well, let's just call it 0.52. Okay. Um, oops, clear. Okay, x bar of 0.52. Standard deviation of 10.86. Okay, x bar, 0.52. Standard deviation of 10.86. N was 11. All right, next we go to my formula. Z equals x bar minus mu over s over the, whoops, not sigma, s over the square root of n. We had to use s because it came from the sample. Okay, uh... We sketch my graph off to the side. Now, again, if there's no difference, it'll be zero. If, if Mozart doesn't have effect, the mean difference will be zero. My mean difference was 0.52. And we're shading to the right because we're determining if the scores are greater. Positive scores mean Mozart did better. Okay, sigma sub x bar is 10.86 divided by the square root of 11 which is going to give me 3.27. That's my standard deviation of x bar. Now I can come over here and plug and chug. 0.52 minus 0 over 3.27. 0.52 divided by 3.27. I get a z score of 0.16. Now right off the bat, if you know anything about z scores, you know that that's not very far above the mean. And we're probably not going to reject. But anyways, we need to get our p-value. So remember, to get the p-value, we're going to do TCDF. We have to use that from the calculator. And we also have to remember that the degrees of freedom are 11 minus 1, which is 10. So when we go to type in my calculator, we're going to use the z-score, comma, 1 and a bunch of zeros, and then we have to enter the uh, degrees of freedom. 
So remember, second vars down to TCDF. Hit enter. Point one six comma one and a bunch of zeros comma degrees of freedom which are ten, and I end up with a, a p value of point four three eight zero. which is huge, <laughs> which means I'm going to fail to reject at any significant level. So our conclusion, we'll use 0.05 just to keep it consistent. We will fail to reject the null hypothesis mean equals zero, mean difference between the two equals zero. All right, at alpha equals 0.05 significance because the p-value is greater than alpha. 0 0.4380 is greater than 0 0.05. We do not have evidence to conclude uh, listening to Mozart now uh, I'm just gonna run back up to the question real quick to finish that off uh, Mozart improves students performance on tests okay uh, improves we could just say students performance okay so that's it uh, in calculations you do nothing really different all right um, except up here, let's go back up here. I just noticed one thing. Mu is not the mean maze completion time, but the mean difference in maze completion time. I apologize for that. I'm glad I caught that. Completion time. Okay, because again, the numbers that we ran the test on were the differences between the scores. This whole column right here was the differences of the two scores.